Welcome. What's up, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, um, grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it. This is episode 19 of Straightforward with Miss B. And I have also my guest co-host with me today, AG. What's up, AG? Muchas gracias. How y'all doing today? What? Muchos gracias. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you should. Maybe that should have been your uh your uh greetings and intro on uh what was that Cinco de Mayo that just passed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, your phone going in and out, sir. Let's get it together. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, you be switching up, moving around. Oh boy. Anyway. Um, so yeah. Yeah. How was your week, man? How was everything um this past uh, past week? Uh buried my we um had my mother's husband funeral. Uh, one of my good friends came in town, old Chad came in town to holler at us. So with respects. Oh Chad. Yeah, my old roommate came in here to see us. Mm-hmm. Show some love. Okay. That, that was nice of Chad. Right. Mm-hmm. Tell Chad I say hey. Okay. Um, I was think, you know, speaking of Chad and and y'all and everything, I was thinking about pulling together something for um for the Bama State folks from you know that that was in school during our time and. I'm just trying to figure out um I'm trying to figure out when though. I know that we have a game here in Atlanta. I believe it's August 27th where we will be um the Hornets will be playing Howard. I thought that might be a good time, you know, just have people come in from out of state. Um, you know, since, you know, Atlanta kind of is like that centralized area, people can just fly in to the airport and, you know, kick it here instead of having to fly in and then still have to drive to Montgomery, you know, to come mm-hmm. hang out. Um, but, yeah, but I'll definitely keep, once I, f- you know, figure it out and, and make my final decision on it, I, I said I'll be sure to keep everybody posted. Yeah, my boy Killer Corn hit me today asking me what I coming to that. Coming to what? To the game? To that game. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You know Derek Graham? Yeah, I believe Quan follow me on Instagram if I'm not mistaken. I believe he does. Shout out to Quan. Uh, for me, my week, um, you know, my week was my week. Um, it was uh, my grandmother's birthday on Sunday, so happy birthday to Ladybug. She turned 88. Um, that's my everybody knows that's my BFF, <laughs> love of the death. So we had All like great. a little. Um, a little gathering after church, you know, um, on Sunday. And um, my mom had got, like, a caterer and everything to cook, you know. And everybody just had a good time fellowshipping and stuff like that. And so that was that was pretty much all I did on Sunday. And then that Saturday before, um, uh, you know, my friend um, Nene, her daughter, <coughs> excuse me, had got her master's degree from um, Clark Atlanta, so she had a she had a little graduation type of brunch slash party. Um, so that was yeah, real nice. Oh, God damn, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we is oh man, but it's okay. It is. It is okay. Everyone has to get old, but you know, all of us, I would say, pretty much. Our crew, we all kind of have not young spirits, but you know, we don't let the age stop us at, at all. <laughs> age ain't nothing but a number. Mm-hmm. You know, we still do our thug there's a lot here. So, but yeah, but it was um, you know, we had a good time and um, it was nice to see who came to the party. Um, Jazz, remember Jazz from Florida? Be with Kara. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz came. So it was I it was a, Yeah, it was uh 
it was uh I hadn't seen her in quite some time, so you know, um I was happy to see her and catch up with her. But yeah, she's she's doing good. She's been doing good too. But enough about us. Let's get right into it of today's episode, everybody. So first and foremost, you know, this week have been it it has been a very um kind of scary um scary week um for just the nation in itself and especially when it comes to you know race relations um you know the buffalo mass shooting um first before we just kind of dive into that a little bit um i wanted to just pay respects to um the victims in that supermarket shooting in buffalo um instead of bringing light and um just you know giving um, some spotlight on the actual shooter's name. You know, I don't want to necessarily state his name on this podcast. This is pretty much no place for, you know, that person to get any shine. Um, But I did want to just, you know, open up that opportunity to instead shine, you know, some spotlight and send our condolences condolences to um, those victims. So um, there was about 18 people um, that was shot um, at Topps Supermarket, I believe 13 out of the 18 people um, did pass away. Um, and of those individuals, um, rest in peace to Cel- uh, what is this? Celestine Cheney, 65 years old. Roberta A. Drury, she was 35, I mean 32. Andre McNeil, 53 years old. Catherine Macy, 72 years old. Margus D. Morrison, 52 years old. Hayward Patterson, 67 years old. Aaron Salter Jr., 55 years old. Geraldine Talley, 62 years old. Ruth Whitfield, 86 years old. And Pearl Young, 77 um, years old. So we definitely wanted to begin, you know, this podcast today. Like I said, um, just sending our thoughts and prayers to those families. And um, the situation is just the Buffalo mass shooting. It was um, basically conducted by an 18-year-old who um, apparently or claimed in his manifesto that, you know, he had planned some time – you know, he had been planning to do something like this for for some time. Um, It was also brought up to the fact that um, this same individual, maybe back in June 2021, has sent some uh, basically bomb threats, I believe, to, might have been to a high school, I believe, Mm -hmm. Um, and stating that, you know, that, you know, some bomb threats and that something was going to happen. So, this young man had been on the radar of law enforcement for quite some time, but of course, with that incident that happened in 2021, of course, they didn't do anything about it at all, um, which unfortunately resulted, you know, in this um, recent mass shooting. Um, it's to me, this is just hate crimes. Um, racially motivated incidents um, is something that I believe that, you know, our society has been around for a very, 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 very long time. But what kind of baffles me about it, and we won't go into full details, you know, about the whole situation and what happened. I'm sure everybody, you know, have read all the articles and seen the news reports by now. But what kind of baffles me um, about the situation is that, you know, these white supremacists that have that that mentality as as if the white race is is decreasing and, and they're steadily, you know, depleting, you know, and thinking that people of color, whether we're black, whether we're Asian, whether we're, you know, Mexican, Latinos, um, we're incre- the population is increasing with more and more of you know people of color. It's almost like, well, who fault is that? Like, what did you, what did you think would happen? 
I mean, we had indigenous people who was here who had occupied the land. We had the, the Indians here who had occupied this land prior to Europeans coming over, you know, and then thus bringing over, you know, slaves um, to North America as well. We were already here, but then it was, you know, Europeans who brought over people of color to this land to populate it. And it's like, it w it's like a situation w that they brought upon themselves. If you wanted us to bring, if you wanted to bring thousands of slaves over to America for, to use as labor, laborers, those laborers had to populate and mm -hmm. continue to populate to make it, you know, to make more laborers for us to, you know, be able to still do work for you guys. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like, it's not, it's not, it's not something that we had planned to do, but now, mm -hmm. but now, you know, with that threat of losing power, whether it's, you know, on the political side, whether it's, the um, economical side, you know, in the communities, whether it's the education side with, you know, more and more people of color gaining degrees and becoming CEOs and, you know, um, owners of these large businesses and such and, you know, powerful when it comes to entertainment, powerful when it comes to sports. Um, what did you expect? Right. So you can't really be mad at the black people for being here, or you can't be mad at, you know, like I said, the Mexicans and the Asians um, of being here. The Mexicans and Asians, of course, they came over, not not necessarily as being brought over as slaves, um, but they came over because America was a, the land of the free, the land of great opportunity, and they wanted to, you know, get in where they fit in, and we allowed them to come in because they were bringing, what, money, or they was bringing manpower to help on these construction sites and whatnot to do work. So you can't really get mad at the people of color. That's the part of, like I said, the white supremacy that I don't necessarily, I don't understand that. And, you know, and for those extremists that just say they have this fear, just like this young 18-year-old, he had a fear that the, the white, person was losing power and they was going to eventually fade away and so the way to combat that is to go on this mass shooting spree well to me he, that was something he was taught he learned that that hate from somewhere he ain't old enough to know about that hate like that somebody was teaching him that that hate yeah because 18 years old and you already hating like I can see like, like an older person maybe you know what I'm saying that went through more life life lessons and probably lost a job to a black person or you know what I'm saying right this young guy here man he's so young it's, it's, it's just pitch, put in my mind that somebody was teaching him that hate and that's how I, how, how I get to go on like that man that shit's still being taught around here yeah and the way that he learned it is he told he told them in the manifesto and I guess conversations that probably law enforcement have had and what you know what have been able to be published in the news media outlets. Um the the dude stated during the pandemic, now mind you, he probably already had prior to the pandemic, he may have had, you know, some of those thoughts kind of going through his mind, but he stated during the pandemic. Everybody was locked in the house. It was nothing to do. He started researching. He started just looking at things on the internet. You know what I mean? Going to different yeah. maybe chat rooms who, um, you know, have groups of people who, you know, have this same thought process. And then he started reading about, I mean, you know, mass shootings and, you know, how other people who have done, um, done mass shootings here in America, how they kind of planned it all out and reading their manifestos and things of that nature. And then he started researching from that point. He started, I guess, believing in that stuff. You know what I mean? Understanding it, you know, from his 18 year old mind standpoint and started researching what type of, um, 
artillery and things like that that he would need if him himself he himself wanted to plan something of that nature. So it was the internet. He didn't have nothing but time on his hand during the pandem- pandemic, and he was on the computer reading, reading up, uh, reading up on all of that stuff. And that's how he found out how to, you know, the internet, how to do it, the internet. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because, like, when you think about it, and not to kind of go off, you know, go off topic, but the internet is definitely, definitely, you know, it has its pros and cons. You know, it's 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 beneficial. You can learn, you can learn almost anything on the internet. Like whatever you're into, whatever you're trying to search up, whatever project you're trying to get done, you can go on the internet and you can you can use the browsers, Google it, and yep. you will find it's exactly. You're going to find out what it is. If you want to talk to people who basically have those, you know, same um, ideologies as you, um, there's chat rooms everywhere where he could talk about it. You know, he, he, him, he himself was on this um, little chat room thing called 4chan. Um, I believe they also said he had uh, a discord as well. That's like another little chat room type of service where you can talk to groups of people, you know, in your own little kind of room, you know, online room. Um, so they, you know, they did state that, you know, prior to the incident, like literally right before he was giving, he had, basically uh, created a private server and he had Im- invited like an exclusive invitation to about 20 people and basically was just chatting away with them in the process of, hey, now I'm about to shoot this, you know. Right. I said, no, it's, you know. It's extremely, it's extremely, extremely sad. Um, if those people had to lose their life like that. Right. Right. It's extremely sad. But it's almost one of those things where as much as we think as much as we think um it's best to prepare for things like that, we can't. Because we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's so in this hustle and bustle of life and caught up with their families and you know you don't know really who's who, who going to do what. You know, you might have somebody that literally lives next door to you, but you have no idea what they may do to m- tomorrow. Right. You know, or you might you walk. Don't know, you don't know anybody for real. Right. Nobody. <laughs> Shit. Nobody. And I think they said the guy had went to, the guy, he had been planning it for months, and I believe the day before, he actually, you know, he actually went to the supermarket and they saw somebody had said that they saw him sitting outside with the uh like a little backpack or something on and I believe the store's um security guard, you know, asked him, you know, why are you just sitting out here and he stated that he was there basically to take a a census. So he was scoping the place out. I guess trying to get an idea of like how many you know how many people um come patronize that that supermarket but the su- security guard ended up telling him hey you know I'm sorry but you can't sort of like no loitering you you're going to have to leave he left and then the next day the shooting happened right man that's sad man the people have to lose their life for a senseless senseless situation like that mhm yeah um, and I just hate that a lot of those people were older, um, yep. and yep. It's, it's people's mamas and grandmas and uncles and grandfathers. Yeah, One of those ladies who was um family was from around here. They've been having it on the news. Oh wow! Yeah, it was. Uh, she was from here, but her sisters and family still stay here. Mm-hmm. And they had it on the news the other day. Victim of that senseless shooting. So, what kind of punishment should he get? 
Um, what you mean, death row? Uh, what about the, the chair? The chair. You don't need to I get ain't out. About, I ain't talking about in in ten years. Either. I'm talking about a, a instant chair. That's what they need to start doing. But you know they're not going to sit around here. We can we tear you up in two years. When yeah. you get found guilty. The other guy Two still. Later you going to the chair. Yeah, the other guy still. He 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 didn't. He ain't dead yet either. Um, they ain't trying to kill him. They ain't trying to make no statement. They gonna keep doing it. If you know you finna get the chair two weeks after you found guilty, you gonna thank the chair. <laughs> you, <laughs> all that they gotta do is get the chair to one person. And but two you know weeks what? after they get found guilty. As sick as these people are in the head, you know people who, who are like that. They wouldn't care. You know, it's still going to be people that's going to continue to do that. It's just like, you know, sometimes you hear over, um, like, in Iran. And, you know, remember back when, like, um, uh, the the planes crashed, you know, in New York? Yeah. It's people that, even though that was more like a religious type of connection there or spiritual connection, type of connection but you know you have these people who who don't mind sacrificing themselves for the cause so we're gonna get rid of you quick we ain't gonna waste no money on you feeding you for 10 and 20 years yeah mm-hmm. that's, that's the way i live at. right I don't, I don't do whatever you're gonna do to them in a hurry right so what i do down. go ahead i mean go ahead but what you do what No, what I was going to say is, you know, for people who are listening on the podcast who are of color, um, it's always like I'm one of those people that I don't like to complain or report on something um, without kind of offering solutions or at least or at least starting that thought process, you know, putting that thought process in people's brains like what what. What are we going to do? Like, what, how can we protect us? You know, how can we protect us? Of course, every that's community. What the, that's what the new gun law is coming to say, where they let you carry a gun and you can conceal it. So when this crazy motherfucker like him pop out and go to shoot, somebody's supposed to shot his ass. Right. The security gun or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's one of the motherfucking patrons in the store supposed to fire them up. Anybody, I'm just saying, anybody, you know, yeah, should have shot. How but... do you walk away alive? How do these people doing these mass shootings walking away alive? Black or white, you know what I'm saying? So that dude in, in um, well, New York, he was black, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the subway, so... um, guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do a mass shooting, man. They supposed to kill you. Yeah, Shit. they can find you. Yeah, I know them old school police with these <laughs> cricket. Uh, I be watching. Um, I watched this show called Cop Land last night. But mm-hmm. if that shit would have happened during their time. They would have been killed. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Gonna kill your ass. You do any stupid shit like that. Yeah. Ain't yeah, no but you know. Yeah, I mean that is. I guess. You know, that will probably be the best way to kind of uh, counteract that type of, you know, uh, behavior. Behavior. Um, behavior. But, you know, we, we have to, too, think about, of course, the overall, you know, families of, of black people. And, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily carry guns. But just from a, of course, mental aspect, like I said, from an economical aspect, I mean, it sh- it should be other ways to help protect our, you know, protect ourselves, protect our communities um, from things happening such as this. Um, and, you know, I think that we, it's going to be a continued fight. It's been a fight this long with racism and people just, you know, hating us. And it's it's going to continue Yep. But but it just seems as though it's it's just it's just outright blatant blatant violence at this point, you know? Like they don't really give they don't give a fuck. No more. So yeah, you ain't got over there yet. <laughs> they don't give a fuck no more. 
So we gonna have mm-hmm. to come up with some some. We we need to figure out some tactics. Okay, when you figure them out, let me know how to stop these crazy motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm-hmm. the million dollar question, goddamn. Right. I, anyway, let's move on. Um, but again, you know, we send our condolences to the victims and oh, also the victims of that South um, California incident that happened too, where the guy went up into that church. Um, and all of this happened within this past week. Um, so you know, rest in peace to those individuals. Well, that it, I think it was just the church incident. It was only one person that died, but you know. Um, we send our condolences to that person's family, um, but there were several others injured in that, and that was basically the same type of situation, just hatred. Um, this was a like a um, Asian Asian hate um, type of situation where the guy, you know, went up in the church and was shooting in the church. So it's just it's crazy. Shameful. Mm-hmm. Shameful. Um, let's see. Young Thug. Free Young Thug. Free Gunna. Um, Young Thug basically, he ready to get out of that, sh- that jail cell. It ain't the Ritz Carlton. He can't, he up. can't take it. He ain't hey, no I windows. Like, <laughs> I, I like, I like Young Thug. That nigga flies here and me, but I know he hating that shit in that um. He hating it. He hated it. They say he had been in there whining, <laughs> whining. <laughs> say they got him in inhumane conditions. The Cobb County, you know, people came to show them. They was on the news showing everybody what an actual cell looked like. <laughs> say that they, you know, they operate their jail by code. You know, they stick to the codes. And he's just in there like everybody else is in there. He just have to deal because and understand that, hey, this is not the Ritz Carlton. Nigga, this jail. This is jail. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, that's all it is. Then you complain about jail. Right. How jail is. Nope, you still can't get no bail. (laughs) Right, unfortunately. Um, Luke Heed, who was, um, part of YSL, um, you know, we send our condolences to his family as well. Unfortunately, he had passed away, um, at 24 years old, um, said he had a stomach ache. He was dealing with a stomach ache. And then next thing you know, his brother had to, you know, take him to the hospital and he passed away, um, said his organs failed. So, um, I think we still kind of, um, waiting on the um ooh, excuse me the medical reports um to, to come out to see exactly what caused him you know what caused his organs organs to fail it could have been anything you know could have been anything apparently um speaking of the young thug situation so it said YFN Lucci YFN Lucci basically st- his attorney um, was trying to get an emergency bond hearing um, because of his name and the situation of him, you know, being stabbed, uh, is stabbed in jail was brought up in Young Thug's indictment. Um, so I wonder what's gonna happen with that situation. That's it. And then yeah, Wack One Hundred saying he he was on Clubhouse talking about um, you know basically you know speculating not speculating but claiming that Lucci must have snitched snitched on Thug. Nah, more than that, he might have did. I would have if a motherfucker tried to kill you. I mean. I'm gonna tell who did it. I ain't trying shit. Fuck it. But that ain't the street code. Don't you supposed to just allow y'all beefs to be handled in the street? I ain't in that shit. No, I'm saying you put yourself <laughs> in YFN and Lucy's shoes. <laughs> shit, man. He from the if street. They let me out. If okay, they so let you me just out, you just gonna do the you gonna go the six nine route. I'm going the route to get me out. You can try to kill me. I ain't wrong. I'm wrong for telling who tried to kill me. 
If you a street, if you a street nigga, if you if you from the streets, and that you from, okay, and that be the argument. All code. that's always the argument. Street guys versus non-street guys. No, I'm just I'm saying you said you if you was think. in that situation, meaning if you was Lucci and you was a street dude, there's street codes that you live by. Snitching ain't part of the street code. So you, you ain't telling me if you talking about the other side. What do you mean? It is snitching. You yeah, supposed right. to do your time like a man or do you know, just go through your situation and then once you get out, then you can handle it with, with the crew. Nah, that ain't the same way for somebody try to kill you. Girl. I'm just it's saying. Real. I mean, I'm just saying. Thing. I'm just saying. It's not the same thing, man. That is the same thing. I understand that it's not the same thing. <laughs> the These same motherfuckers thing. just tried to kill me <laughs> in jail. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Once a motherfucker try to kill you, all that cold shit go out the door. Fuck that shit. Right, this is second or third time. Yeah, yeah, I know it was them niggas. Y'all gonna let me out because they ain't here too? Uh, <laughs> yeah. After so long, motherfucker wanna get out of jail, Sean. Yeah, so but you can say whatever L- L- you want. Lucci did his dirt too, so he ain't going nowhere. Okay, well, tell you, goddamn. But they gonna, <laughs> I don't think they gonna let him out. That's what I'm saying. They ain't gonna work. Right. So why tell? If you know it ain't, it ain't gonna work. You're trying to get out of jail. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. We're trying to get out of jail. Like, we trying to get out of jail man we are not telling on you cause I'm not gonna I be in that you particular. some dope. Nigga, you tried to kill me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? These folks two times to kill me. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you tried to kill me. Mm-hmm. You tried to kill me. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you tried to kill me. I can't be in here with these motherfuckers gonna try to kill me again. This time they might actually do it. So you gonna risk living and you by think, the street uh, okay, and, and getting killed. Lucha people tried to kill Thug and them and his crew. So what's the difference? They don't snitch on him. They haven't snitched on Lucha crew. Why then? They tried to kill him recently in jail. Man, you think them people that's left on the street out of their crews ain't trying to, they, they always been trying to kill each other for years. It's been an ongoing <laughs> thing. This ain't nothing that just happened. Hey, I watched the interview the other day with Thug. Mm-hmm. He was talking about some dude, the dude that actually shot him. He said, uh, yeah, dude shot me, man. And, um, uh, he kept going in and out of jail. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, man. Fuck this nigga keep going out of jail. I can't kill him. I'm trying to kill him. I oh, can't catch wow. him with a car. I can kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I like that little young dude, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I like I, him. I love he too. Rich. He got a lot of, he had yeah, like he want a lot. He got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, the... you know, that's, that. that's a little, that's too little for me, man. I'm going to pray for you, thug. I don't like to see yeah. nobody locked up. That's for sure. See you in 20. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Shit. They want the feds come get the... Well, they ain't even no fed case. Really, it's just a state case. They trying to make them niggas spend all their money. Basically. They trying to make them spend their money with the state because the fed go, go pick it up. And once the state, fed pick it up, it, it's over with then. Yeah, the state really with a Rico state case, man. That shit ain't. That's some new shit that lady just be doing. But she know the feds gonna pick that shit up. She gonna try to give them spend all their money on lawyers, and then if they if they do beat the state case, the feds gonna pick it up. They ain't gonna have no more money. <laughs> well, free my nigga thug. Free thug. Nick Cannon. Um, Nick Cannon said he just had a recent consultation, um, for a a vasectomy because, you know, he has an eighth child, I believe is on the way or just came. Um, but yeah, Nick, I, I approve that. Go ahead and get the vasectomy, man. Like, Like you said, you don't need to populate the world. (laughs) (laughs) You do not need to populate the world, child. So please go ahead and get that vasectomy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> get it, it snip. You said what? Get it snip. Mm-hmm. Um Diddy and Diddy's chicks basically, you know, 
going was going back and forth on um social media. <laughs> so as we know, Diddy had hosted the Billboard Music Awards and um his long long time a long time side chick was in the audience and she made herself um be known that she was there. She of course, you know, had a little video that she took and she posted it on social media like, hey, bitches. <laughs> That's how she was looking on that video. Like, hey, I am here. Um, but at the same time, the city girls. Um, you know, it, it has been some rumors um, going about that young Miami, um, she is one half of the rap group City Girls, um, was dating Diddy. And so, basically, the two chicks just kind of came head to head um, on social media, which a lot of us found to be extremely, extremely funny. Um, it was hilarious. Young Miami basically said, hey, I'm the young chick, you know, and I'm going to stay on them, so you're just going to have to deal. But the the thing about it is that other chick, she's like half black, half Korean. She literally has been his side chick through Cassie. She's been his side chick through Kim Porter. Rest in peace, Kim. She's been his side chick for extremely long, at least about 15 years. Probably she longer than that. There. Right. So why is she worried about the new girl now? Exactly. Exactly. And then also, Young Miami. She's a self uh, uh, professed city girl. So, why is she worrying about it? Why is she on the flip side? Why is she worried about the side chick? About the side chick trying to get some attention. She probably already introduced them to each other. Nah, I don't think they ever met, but I don't know. But the girl posted a picture of um, after the Billboard Music Awards. Um, the the Korean chick, she also posted a picture basically um, to her stories. It was a picture of her, and you could see Diddy kissing her um, on the cheek. And that kind of like, <laughs> that's what said it all, because Miami had responded um, on her thread, like, look who tried, you know, like, dang, girl, you know, look who trying to get out, get attention or who needs some attention or some shit. And then they started going back and forth. It was just a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. Shit, they better sit back and get that 250K. They said they get, he get young Miami every month. Yeah, exactly. Sit back, relax. You can have whatever you want to, Diddy. I got to be here whenever you call me, too. Right. I ain't got shit to say. Right. You gonna be <laughs> dealing with him because Diddy have already said he said this in multiple interviews that I've heard him in. He is not getting married. He does not want to get married. Like he just don't see himself getting married. So if they just trying to hold out to see if they gonna be one of the ones that's gonna walk down the aisle with Diddy child. Best thing they could do is try to get a baby by Diddy, but other than that, that's what I'd be shooting for if I was one of them. Right, or something. Get you gonna have to get something out of it. I hope. Yeah, hopefully, I they got some insurance. I hope the Chinese. I mean, the Korean chick got an insurance policy out on Diddy. As long as she been around, she better have an insurance policy. Man. Cause ain't no way I'm gonna be your side chick, the mistress, for all these years and. I don't have a policy, you know, in your name. That ain't happening. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who paying for it? Shit. He can pay for it. Matter Shit. of fact, I wouldn't even mind paying for it. Hell, I pay a little 20, 20, 25 dollars a month. And I know I'm finna cash out when you die. <laughs> Damn, that's a reason goddamn didn't come up there. You a suspect. You <laughs> Damn. I'm not that kind of person, you guys. <laughs> whoever listening, <laughs> whoever, whoever. <laughs> no, she's talking about that right there. I'm just saying, why be a mistress that that long and you not get nothing out of it? You got to get something out of it. Man, man, you paid for that shit. 
Well, you well, don't he have to sign off on that shit? We get insurance on him. Yeah, he can't just get insurance on anybody. Exactly. Yeah, he signed off on it. So his social security number and everything on it. The fuck? He approved it. I'm just pay, I just pay it every month. I wouldn't care to pay. I pay it every month. And I got like yeah. a five million dollar policy or something out on you. You can get that on anybody, though, not just him. We talking about his relationship, though. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm talking about Diddy. <laughs> you missing the point. You missing the yeah, point. I, I get the point. I see where your head at. Child. No. Now and then. Exactly. Shit, I had I had to deal with you, too, all these years. That nigga quit me. I still got my insurance policy. <laughs> yeah. Or buy me some buy me a couple of acres, buy me some property. You're gonna have to do something of that nature. You two hundred fifty dollars two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month. You can do it if you he want. He ain't gave me nothing. He gave me, he, that's what he gave me. Hold on, say a month. That's what you that's what the rumor me will say. We don't know that for sure. We don't know that. that. I, I don't think so. The whole beef. I, I don't think so. Now. You don't think that nigga taking care of them wrong? Not no two fifty a month, no. Yeah. Maybe two fifty every three months, but not on a monthly basis. I don't think so. Hundred grand a month. Mm, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't think so. But anyway, enough of Diddy and his whores. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna go ahead and close this out. Get this thing <sighs> going for the day. So we, um, as we always do, you guys, sorry. this Sometimes this podcast can be kind of all over the place. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. This is raw, authentic conversations. And we are mm-hmm. always glad that you guys are tuning in and will continue to tune in. And, um, yeah, you want to say... Adios. Amigos. Amigos. At the wild crocodile. At the wild crocodile. All right, everybody. As you know, don't forget to follow us on all streaming and social media platforms at Straightforward uh, with Miss B. And um, if any business inquiries or advertising inquiries, email us at straightforwardmedia at gmail.com. And we will see y'all later.